Welcome back to another screencast on functions. We've looked at several examples of functions to flesh out and instantiate those definitions, and it wouldn't be a full instantiation if we didn't look at non-examples of functions. So you might be wondering, after all these examples, is everything a function, or is it possible to create a process that somehow fails the definition of function? The answer is going to be absolutely yes, and this is going to be this video is going to contain some of those non-examples. So just to remind yourself, there are five basic ingredients that go into being a well-formed function. We have to specify the objects that we're going to change that we now know as the domain of the function. We have to specify the process that we're going to undergo to make that change happen. That could be a formula or it could be a set of verbal directions. We have to have a set that holds the outcomes of our changes and that would be, we now know that as the codomain of the function. And then we have these two properties at the end that every valid input needs to produce at least one outcome. And finally that any single input should produce only one outcome and not have any sort of splitting behavior like such. A function could, or a process could fail to be a function by failing any of these five criteria. So let's look at some examples of how each one might go down. For example, here are a couple of examples where we fail to meet the three basic parts where we either don't specify what the sets are involved in the function or we don't specify the rule. For example, if I just say that f of x equals radical x, that is not really a function. That might surprise you because you know, that looks like something straight out of calculus or algebra. Well, in calculus and algebra, we have uh, a sort of unwritten rule that all functions go from the real numbers to the real numbers. Okay, but if I don't say that, uh, we now are in a, a situation where any kind of sets could possibly show up here. So if I don't actually tell you what the domain is, or specify explicitly what the codomain is, I really haven't given you a full description of the function yet. For example, maybe I mean the domain to be the set of integers, or the codomain to be the set of integers. Okay, well if that's the case, then this function has a lot of problems because not every, uh, I don't, I'm not totally sure that this process actually sends things into the codomain anymore. So in order to be a real function, to be fully specified and well-defined, we must explicitly state what the domain is and what the codomain is. But just stating the codomain and the domain isn't enough, of course. For example, if I just say g maps the integers to the integers, that's obviously not a function because I don't know what g does. I haven't specified what is the process. There are a lot of ways I could send integers to integers, change one integer into another. What process do I mean this time? If I don't say so, then I haven't got a well-formed function. So a correct function needs to have the domain, codomain, and process explicitly specified. Otherwise, we have more work to do. Now, suppose you have the domain and codomain and process all specified explicitly. You could still fail to be a function in a couple of ways. One way is that the process isn't defined for all points in the domain. Remember, we said that every valid input from the domain needs to have an output, at least one output output associated to it. And here's an example where I've specified the domain, the real numbers, the codomain, and the process here, but this is not a function because not every point in the domain has an output. Uh, the point x equals 2, which is definitely a member of the domain, uh, f is not defined at 2. f of 2 is not defined. We get division by 0 there, and that is not defined. So if the function is not defined at every single point in the domain, then I don't have a real function on my hands here. Now it is possible in certain cases, like this one, to restate what the domain is. For example, I could say, well, that's actually the only point in the domain where I hit this particular problem here. And so I could restate the domain to say, like, well, what I really meant was the real numbers minus the point 2 into the real numbers. Now if that's my new domain, then this is a perfectly legitimate function because every point in this set, which is a set of all real numbers except two, uh, is de definitely works. Every point in that newly restricted domain has an output. Now the final way we could fail to be a function is that you specify the domain and codomain, you specify the process, every point in the domain has an output, but every point in the domain might have multiple outputs. This is the dreaded uh, splitting of inputs into multiple outputs problem that we have skirted up until now, but here's a couple of examples where we actually hit this problem. For example, let's define a function or a process, not a function, called f that takes the set of all classes at Grand Valley State University, such as Math 210 Section 1, and sends it to the set of all names of students at Grand Valley State University. And so the process says take a class x 
text that would be like Math 210 Section 1 and return the first name of a student in Class X. Now that is definitely uh, not a well-defined function because although there's a process specified and there's a domain and a codomain, um, and I, the problem is that if I put in a particular class here like Math 210 Section 1, uh, whose name am I supposed to return here? There are, you know, there are 18 students in that particular class, and I don't know which one to pick. Okay, so there are. This is a situation where I have one input that splits into, in this case, 18 different outputs, a whole tree's worth of outputs here. So that is definitely what we would call a multi-valued function, uh, not a function, a multi-valued process. So therefore, it is not a function. Uh, one input splits into multiple outputs. Another more technical example is this one. Define the process I and T that goes from F to F. Here, F is the set of all functions from the real numbers to themselves. We saw this in an earlier screencast about calculus. And int of F is going to be an antiderivative of F. So the problem with this uh, process is that it's multiple valued. For example, int of X squared has not just one, but many different outputs. I could uh, say X cubed over 3 is an output, but also X cubed over 3 plus 1 is an output, and X cubed over 3 minus radical 5 is an output output, one input splits into multiple outputs. So that makes that a process, a process that we're really interested in, but it's not a function because it's multiple valued. So there are five ways to fail to be a function. And uh, just remember when we're thinking about functions, all five of those basic ingredients do need to be satisfied and we need to be careful about checking them. Thanks for watching all these screencasts and for all your patience.